Uh, once again, this entered the English language via the US military. I'm spotting a theme here. They like acronyms in the military. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to words, right? I think we all know that both countries have different words, some are the same words, sometimes different spellings of the same words, but I'm from a country that thinks we invented all of the words, uh, that is the English words. Of course, we didn't invent most of them, they came from previous languages like French, German, Latin, etc, etc, but we often specifically don't remember that America contributed to the lexicon as well, and there are some very common words that America did indeed give to the English language. Chief among those were acronyms. You all know what an acronym is, right? I don't need to patronise you on that one. But I'm going to anyway. An acronym is a combination of letters that stands for a sort of a wider collection of words, but is usually said in this shortened variety. And America, for whatever reason, just seems to be very, very good at them. I almost titled this video, British Acronyms Ain't Got Nothing on America, but then I just, that sounded way too far. So I just kept it to a very simple listicle of six acronyms that the United States gave to the English language. Some of these were very much not on my radar until I moved to the United States. Some, on the other hand, were. Especially this one. That's right, who knew that radar itself was an acronym? And not only is it that, it's also a palindrome. You may have seen that word roaming around the internet recently because we had a palindromic day. But radar is, or should I say was, an acronym, and it stood for this. Radio detection and ranging. In other words, it came from this idea of being an electronic system for locating objects by means of radio waves. And it entered the English language via the US Navy, no less, in 1940 uh, to mean that very thing. And you know, there was, it did have competition from the British. It almost wasn't called radar at all. We wanted to go with the much longer radio location, which I imagine would have been shortened at some point anyway, and probably would have become radar just by itself or something along those lines. But the American usage won out and we use it in both countries quite routinely and have done since World War II. And it's become kind of a, just a regular noun now. And we've sort of forgotten that it was once an acronym. We don't, we don't even put periods or, you know, full stops in between each letter and we write it lowercase. Um, so it's been downgraded in a way, but I still have a lot of love for that word. And a lot, of the, a lot of what I just said about radar is also true of our next entry. Oh yeah, the word scuba, as in scuba diving, is indeed an acronym, or should I say again, was. It entered the English language after radar, but only by a few years in 1952, and it was the brainchild of one particular man. His name was Major Christian Lambertson, who served in the US Army Medical Corps from 1944 to 1946. He didn't initially call his diving apparatus scuba, as we now know and love it. Initially, he called it this, LARU, which was another acronym, which stood for Lambertson, amphibious respiratory unit presumably he just he didn't he wasn't arrogant and he didn't want his name in there i'd have gone with that so laru my i'm going i'm going laru diving uh, which sounds like something you might do in hawaii but eventually scuba won out again at his insistence. And the word, just like radar, has taken off in Britain as well. So this is not an example of one of those that I only picked up in the United States. Um, and you'll notice once again, scuba, no periods or full stops in between the letters. And they're all lowercase. All of that previous usage has gone. It's disappeared. It's, it's missing. You might almost say, it's gone this. Ah yes, AWOL, who remembers the internet in 1996? That was AOL, so they've gone AWOL to some extent. It is of course an acronym and it is perhaps more well known as an acronym than the first two entries on this very list. It means absent without leave and it came from the US military in about the First World War, 1917 to be precise, that's the first attestation of it. And you know, at that time, not only would it have been recognized as an acronym, but the US military would have sounded out every single letter as in, I don't know, as in, you know, old, old Charlie is A-W-O-L. Eventually, by World War II, they recognised they could save time during the search for Charlie and just say AWOL, and that's kind of stuck ever since. It has indeed made it a little bit into British English. It's not quite as common there as you might find scuba or radar, but it does have some presence nonetheless, possibly when we are mimicking Americans. But when it comes to mimicry of American acronyms, we usually reserve it for our next entry.
And that's because in Britain, to this very day, we still sound out the letters ASAP when saying this very phrase. Which, you know, is somewhat ironic because that's not saying it as quick as possible. Of course, Americans know that and they say ASAP. And they have the high ground here by which to do so because they, in fact, coined that very acronym. In fact, to be very specific, the US military is believed to have done so. Indeed, the first written reference to it comes in this book by Captain Annis G. Thompson. Uh, he was a veteran of the Korean War. And that dates this word back to the 1950s, but a few years before that, the second best acronym that I ever acquired after moving to the United States was born. So I'll be honest, when I first heard the word foobar, I thought I was being taken to some sort of drinking establishment that was a little untoward. Until that is, it was explained to me that foobar is itself an acronym. And it means, and I hope my mum is watching, f up beyond all recognition. Uh, once again, this entered the English language via the US military. I'm spotting a theme here. They like acronyms in the military. And they specifically like one that give off a negative connotation, it seems. And once again, it's sort of fallen into general usage. Americans might use it, not even sort of referring back to the acronym itself, but just now recognizing it to mean that, you know, this is, it's damage beyond repair. But in Britain, this one didn't really make it. I mean, we don't see many instances of this usage over there. Uh, this is not quite the case with our final acronym, which also enjoys the responsibility of being my favorite since I've moved to the United States. Yes, snafu, which is the perfect word to describe that previous transition. Uh, it means basically situation normal all f up, which is to suggest that my transitions are always terrible and that you should expect it by now because as the OED puts it, an expression conveying the common soldier's laconic acceptance of the disorder of war and the ineptitude of his superiors. Uh, but to complete the pattern, where did this acronym come from? It came from the United States, but not just the United States. I think you know by now, it came from the United States military. It's first attested from 1942, so the Second World War, even by the United States definition. It's often euphemized to include the word foul instead. So situation normal, all fouled up. I just, I use the swear word because, because of copper mostly. But now the word snafu in just very simple noun form could just mean something's a mess. And once again, it could go back and forth. People may or may not use it nowadays without that knowledge of its former acronym life. But one thing I can say is it is mostly more common in the United States, but it has found some currency back in Britain, as you can see. That's it for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite acronyms are. They don't, they don't have to be American. You know, they could be, they could be Danish. Let me know your favorite Danish acronyms. This this could be fun. Who knows? I, I could have just stumbled upon something that I didn't intend there. If you would like to keep up with me on a day-to-day -day basis, creepy, then you can do so on Twitter at LostInThePondUS. And finally, a big shout out to all my patrons without whom none of this would be possible. You know, the support of my patrons really, really is important. Without that, I can't I can't justify the research time that I put into this or, or even the video editing time that I put into it. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Again, some of the perks you'll get for doing so is access to my secret live stream and anybody that pledges $5 or more a month will get access to not only that, but my secret podcast and more. Until next time, I'm going to go AWOL. Not, I mean, it's not without, I've given myself leave, so it doesn't really care. It's abs, I'm just going absent. Bye. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond.